I don't care nothing about no H, I'm trippin' gettin' sick I don't care about no nigga, cause these niggas just be flames I don't stun nobody, bitch, he do that, that's a man See we drippin' like the fox, that I just put on my pretend Nigga, I was selling drugs, bad with niggas, they was What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, only one KDB, and I'm back with another video In today's video, bro, we got the forgotten gang life of Will Smith I mean, the forgotten gang life Will Smith lived My bad, my bad, my bad Will Smith lived the gang life? What the fuck, he was a part of the rolling 60s or something? I never knew Will Smith was gang gang, bro. My bad, bro. You find out something new every day. But we finna get to the video, bro. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell so you're notified. I drop another banger, bro. We finna get to it, bro. We finna see what uh, Will Smith gang life was like, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even know the nigga was in the gang, bro. He was gang gang since potty train, apparently. But we finna get to it, bro. In the winter of 1989, Will Damn, Smith had the worst day of his life. He was in jail for allegedly doing something that would seem extremely out of character. To he was drug trafficking, wasn't he? He looked like he had drugged. I ain't gonna lie, Will Smith, it looked like you got it in you, my boy. You is from Philadelphia, in West Philadelphia, born and raised on a playground. You know what I'm saying? So it looked like you sling a little drugs a little bit. So that's probably what he was doing, but that's found out. His fans today. Or this could have been the moment that prompted Will to adopt the squeaky clean and largely positive image he had portrayed throughout his entire career. Okay. In 1989, the Grammys introduced hip hop categories for the first time and got off to a pretty shaky start, if not horrible. The nominees for best rap performance were Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff, LL Cool J, Son Peppa, cool, cool Mo D, used and to have JJ some Fat. Hats, bro. However, three lie. out of five nominees didn't show up and boycotted the event. The leaders of Def Jam Records, Russell Simmons and Lior Cohen, orchestrated this boycott because none of the rap categories were televised. Damn. Yet all nine country music categories were part of its televised show. DJ Jazzy Jeff Damn, told reporters, them country songs, bro. They just said there wasn't enough time to televise all of the categories. They televised 16 categories and from record sales, from the billboard charts, from the overall public's view, there's no way you can tell me that out of 16 categories, that rap isn't in the top 16. Will Smith, or the yeah. Fresh Prince as he was the still Fresh known Prince. back then, Yo, said that this might be the case if oh, they improve yeah. on this for next year. He said, they don't know anything like about rap music. Before. Our boycott was to open their eyes to rap music, so next year, some rapper will be able to perform at the Grammys, and the awards will be televised because the music is large enough and important enough to be on the show. Okay. When the winner was read out, the award for best rap performance went to Parents Just Don't Understand by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. At just 20 years of age, Will Smith had become a Grammy winner. Oh, he, he was won. helping break hip hop into the mainstream. Oh, he won. You know what I'm However, saying? the clean like cut the image Will had portrayed in his lyrics and videos was not exactly the full reality. Around this time, West Philadelphia was being run by a gang known as the Junior Black Mafia, or JBM. Will Smith was a part of JBM? I never even heard of JBM until today. The Junior Black Mafia. Will Smith was out there gang banging. I ain't even know that, bruh. Will Smith, I ain't know you had it in you. Well, you is from West Philly, bruh. You know what I'm saying? You probably got a little gang gang in you, bruh. You know what I'm saying? You was out there screaming, JBM. Y'all probably had a handshake and all kind of shit. I see you, Will. Will has explained that it was a situation no gangs, where you were either kids. with them or against you. them. So he became friendly with this gang. Will often hung out with Leroy Bucky Davis, who was a prominent member of the group. In his memoir, Will said, when you're a 20-year-old rapper from the inner city of Philadelphia who's just made his first million dollars, the only people who can afford to hang with you are other rappers, professional athletes, and drug, and drug dealers. dealers. I chose drug dealers. To keep him out of harm's way in public, Will had a bodyguard named Charlie Mack, who was dubbed the Big Brother of Philadelphia. He's like a rapper. Will and Jazzy Jeff even had a song like called Charlie Mack, up. First Outside the Limo, oh, he, about him where Will rap. raps. He's our homeboy from around the block. He's regarded through the city as the hip-hop cop. Height about 6'6", six, six, weight about 290. Everywhere I go, Charlie Mack is right behind me. Ooh, I see in you, Will Smith's man. memoir, he says, I was Charlie's ticket into right rooms here. into which he would have never been invited. And Charlie was the hammer that came down on anybody that dared to talk trash about me. So Charlie was on go. He was like, anybody say something about Will, I'm kicking them in their ass. So that's how Charlie was. Okay, Charlie, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Charlie on the surface, like it looked like Will was destined for a further success after his Grammy win. But in October of that year, Will and Jazzy Jeff quickly tried to continue their momentum with the release of their album, And In This Corner. The album completely corner. flopped. Will said, Damn. it was a tragedy. It went like double plastic. Sales were poor, which had a domino effect where they were selling fewer tickets and their performance fees were cut by 70%. 
Everything they worked to get to where they were was brutally taken away from them. Alongside this crisis, both Will and Jazzy Jeff were exposed for not having paid their taxes. Whether it was being naive or criminal intent, they were earning lots of money. Bro, you gotta pay your tax. Oh yeah, you do gotta pay your taxes, bro. When you get when you get hella money, bro. Even now, like you gotta pay your taxes if you got a good paying job. But like, god damn, the government wants so much, bro. They might as well back off, bro. Let them motherfucker enjoy their goddamn cash. You gotta keep paying taxes and shit. Like, leave me alone. Damn. And not paying a single dime in tax. <laughs> Will Smith has joked that. about the spirit and said, Before I was in trouble with Uncle Phil, I was in trouble with Uncle Sam. With things going yeah, from bad to worse, basically. Will was still loved in Philly. He was invited onto the Philadelphia radio station WDAS FM and appeared on a new show called Rap Digest. The show was hosted by Mimi Brown, who has supported Will since early on. The studio was a soundproof room with see through glass on both sides. So when Will was performing, a crowd began to form through the glass. Eventually, Will realized that he was now being watched by Dana Goodman, his first ever record promoter and someone he was, by then, on bad terms with. Goodman was with another record promoter named William Hendricks and whispered something into his ear. Hendricks then opened the door and entered the studio. Hendricks was now standing beside Charlie, who was keeping a close eye on him. Will finished rapping okay. and sat next to Mimi, and Hendricks shouted over at Will, You need to thank Dana Goodman. Charlie told Hendricks to calm down and that they were on live radio, so he needed to stop shouting. Hendrix ignored this advice and shouted even louder, <laughs> You need to thank Dana Goodman. Charlie moved further Damn. towards him and Hendrix tried to shove him away. And he again shouted, You need to thank Dana Goodman. Like, Except for this time, before he could Shut fully the say up. the word Goodman, Hendrix delivered a swift right hand from Charlie and was knocked out. He fell over and eight track cassettes were now scattered all across the room. Fearing that the police might arrive at any minute, Charlie and Will fled the scene. William Hendrix was beaten badly to the extent that he almost went blind in one eye and needed six stitches, and Will Smith was arrested. Will Smith was charged with aggravated assault, criminal conspiracy- should have been listening to Will Smith raps, bro. He said, he said, William right behind me, or whatever the fuck he said. He said, Will right behind me, you know what I'm saying? Ain't that's his bodyguard name, William? I don't fucking know, but he said his bodyguard right behind him, bro. So if you've been listening to the lyrics, bro, you would have known not to fuck with Will, bro. You know what I'm saying? See, simple assault and recklessly endangering another person. The sequence of events on what happened at the studio came from Will Smith's memoir, so keep in mind that there may be some level of bias to his account. The most perplexing aspect of this case was that Charlie Mack wasn't even arrested, and it was alleged that Will ordered the hit on Hendrix, so he was responsible. Will Smith argued that he was targeted because Hendrix could get more money out of him than Charlie Mack. But whatever the finer details were, Will Smith went from a Grammy winner to a prisoner in a very short span of time. In an interview with Oprah, he said, So the money is gone. The car's gone. Oh, Charlie, I'm man, laying on the man. floor in a jail cell, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I won a Grammy eight months ago, right? Like, Crazy what is happening? Can change so quick. A source told the National Enquirer, Will had to spend a night in the cell at the West Philadelphia police station with other inmates waking him up all night long and asking for his autograph. I'd have told y'all, back the fuck up, bro. This ain't no time for me to be signing autographs, bro. Can't you see I'm in, I'm fucking stressed out right now? Nigga, I'm in this goddamn jail cell. Nigga, I was just at the Grammys not too long ago. Now I'm in here with y'all. Nigga, get the fuck out of my face. I ain't signing no goddamn me autographs. If you don't go to bed somewhere, nigga, we in jail. This ain't no time to be a fan. Yeah, that's what I would have said. It was said. the worst night of his life. He wants to forget it ever happened. What you won't find in Will Smith's memoir is one story that explains why these charges went away. According to the narrative... Will Smith, don't tell me you out here snitching, bro. You know what I'm saying? They said these charges went away. We finna see how they went away, bro. Hopefully you ain't telling nobody, bro. Cause that would be tragic, bro. You know what I'm saying? But let's go. JBM were working hard to make sure he didn't end up serving a prison sentence. Oh, JBM After was the assault, Hendrick's 13-year-old son, Sheldon, was allegedly offered a ride home by someone he knew. However, this person happened to be a member of the JBM. When he got into the car, this gang member locked all of the doors and said, You know there's money on your head. I can't let you go home. His father, Damn. William Hendricks, was then notified by the JBM that they had his son. Afterward, two things happened. Will Smith was released from prison with all charges dropped, and Sheldon Hendricks was released by the JBM. And Sheldon is okay. confident that these two outcomes are related. Another possible reason as to why the charges were dropped is that the Hendricks realized Will was completely broke and had no money. Sheldon Damn. also said that Will Smith later paid his father $25,000 for his silence since the incident. And when the National Enquirer approached William Hendricks for a response, he provided them with no comment. I would have said the same thing. It should also be noted that the National Enquirer is a tabloid news outlet known for sharing gossip and hearsay. 
It could be That's fabricated, boy, Sleepy Joe. or it could equally be true that the kidnapping happened without Will Smith even knowing about it. But this was the life and environment that Will inhabited before he became the movie star that he is today. When Will finally got out, he was given a warning. A family friend was a cop and asked him if he knew a certain group of people. Will admitted that he knew them, and they all happened to be members of the JBM. Okay. His friend warned him that the FBI was rapidly closing in on this gang and would be willing to arrest anyone with any association with them whatsoever. So he was told to leave Philadelphia for the foreseeable future. Will had been flying back and forth to LA at the time, so he decided to move permanently to the West Coast. And in an act of desperation, he asked JBM member Bucky for a loan of $10,000. This would pay him enough money to pursue a career in acting. Sadly, the friend of his died a couple of days later. As the FBI was closing in on the gang, violence ensued from within the gang, and Will lost a good friend. Back in LA, things didn't go according to plan, and he found it hard to get work. At this point, Will was panicking. His then-girlfriend suggested that he could get some acting roles by simply hanging out at the Arsenio Hall show, and hopefully, he'd bump that? into someone there. Will wasn't in any way confident that this would work, but he did it anyway. And around here, he bumped into a guy named Benny Medina who was looking to develop a sitcom about his teenage life when he was sent to live with a rich family in Beverly Hills. Okay, Benny, As you so may have guessed by now, he was developing The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. To secure Shout a role in the sitcom, Will was invited to a party at the home of the legendary music producer Quincy Jones, Quincy, who yeah. was looking to produce the show. Will was famous in hip-hop, which by then was still a niche genre of music. Hey, Quincy, bro, you might want to sign me to a record deal, bro. I'm a good rapper and a good singer. You know what I'm saying? I can do both. You know what I'm saying? If you want to sign me, bro, I'm telling you, bro, my skills is, is uh, Im impeccable. Since he's home, he was now surrounded by household names like Steven Spielberg and Stevie Wonder. The prospective producers of the show were also at the house, so Benny asked Will to audition right in front of everybody. Speaking to Idris Elba in an interview, Will said, Benny told me, right now, everybody that needs to say yes to the show is sitting out in that living room waiting for you, and you're about to make a decision that's going to affect the rest of your life. So I said, F it, give me 10 minutes. Okay. I got out there and it was all a blur, but I did the audition to a standing ovation in the room. I was ad-libbing. And I don't need to tell you that Will got the part. With this role, Will Smith would go on to become a superstar. Will parted ways with JBM and is believed to have given them $600,000 so they could remain on good terms. Throughout the 90s, Will Smith would be inescapable with his appearances on TV, movies, and the radio. He currently holds the record for starring in eight consecutive 100 million plus hits at the US box office. And in 2022, he was finally able to brush off the criticism that he was only commercially acclaimed and not critically acclaimed when he won the Best Actor Academy Award for his role in King Richard. And sadly, not many people remember him collecting this award. Instead, they oh, recalled the now infamous slap, slap that he gave Chris Rock. Rock when he made fun of Jada Pinkett Smith. I remember this. In the aftermath of this incident, many were shocked at how out of character this was, but some news outlets pointed toward the incident in 1989 and the life that the younger Will Smith had once led. Oh, Will Smith was standing on business before. That explains why he slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. But uh, anyway, bro, if y'all enjoyed that reaction video, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell so you notified and drop another banger, bro. We finna get out of here, bro. I'll see y'all boys in the next video, bro. I appreciate y'all. Y'all been showing me mad love. We gonna keep dropping. We gonna be the biggest reaction channel of all time. I'm telling you, bro. But yeah, bro, I'm out of here, bro. I said, oh.